Hello, friends. Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to our latest episode. In this video, we'll take a look at legends, stories, and the missing from Joshua Tree National Park. Join me. Let's walk and see. Now, Joshua Tree National Park is located in southeastern California, east of Los Angeles and close to Palm Springs. The park is named after the Joshua trees native to the Mojave Desert. It spans across San Bernardino and Riverside counties. It encompasses portions of two deserts, with each ecosystem's characteristics primarily determined by its elevation, the higher Mojave Desert and the lower Colorado Desert. Additionally, the little San Bernardino Mountains run along the southwest border of the park. According to the National Park Service, Humans have inhabited the Joshua Tree area for over 5,000 years. However, in the late 1920s, new roads were built into the desert, leading to an influx of land developers and cactus poachers. Minerva Hoyt, a resident of Pasadena who was passionate about desert plants, became concerned about removing cacti and other plants for use in Los Angeles gardens. She tirelessly worked towards protecting this area, which ultimately led to the designation of 825,000 acres as Joshua Tree National Monument in 1936. Before 1940, the superintendent of Yosemite National Park administrated this monument. However, James Cole became the first superintendent in 1940. The National Park Service received the eastern part of the historic oasis of Mara in 1950, which the 29 Palms Corporation deeded. The monument was reduced by 265,000 acres in the same year to exclude mining property. On October 31, 1994, Joshua Tree National Monument was upgraded to park status as a part of the Desert Protection Bill. An additional 234,000 acres were added to the park with a new boundary following natural features such as entire mountain ranges instead of survey lines. This change provides better resource protection, easier boundary identification and monitoring, and essential habitat for desert bighorn sheep. The park's elevations range from a low of 536 feet to a high of 5,814 feet at Quail Mountain. In 1976, Congress declared 420,000 acres within Joshua Tree National Park as wilderness. Out of the total 792, 623 acres of the park's area, 591,624 are designated as wilderness. The park provides shelter to 813 higher plant species. 46 reptile species, 57 mammal species, and over 250 bird species. According to the Federal Register, the desert tortoise is listed as threatened, the triple-ribbed milk vetch is endangered, and Parrish's daisy is threatened. Furthermore, 49 plant species are protected within the park. Joshua Tree has one paleontological area, with potentially eight more. The park has taken measures to preserve over 700 archaeological sites, 88 historic structures, and 19 cultural landscapes. It also holds a museum collection of 230,300 items. National Park Service officials say that Joshua Tree National Park is most comfortable to visit during the fall and spring seasons. The highs during these seasons usually range from 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, while the lows are around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In the winter, the temperature drops below freezing at night, and the highs are usually around 60 Fahrenheit. There can be occasional snow at higher elevations. Summers are hot, with highs reaching over 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the low around 75 degrees Fahrenheit at night. It's important to note that the park is busier during springtime and holidays, so it can get crowded. Joshua Tree is also prone to strong winds and flash flooding during any season. It takes around 45 minutes to drive from the west entrance in Joshua Tree to the north entrance in 29 Palms. If you're driving from the north entrance to the south entrance, the drive will take approximately one hour. And if you're driving from the west entrance to the south entrance, the drive will take roughly an hour and a half. The National Park Service is responsible for maintaining 199 miles of roads, of which 93 miles are paved and 106 miles are unpaved. The park has nine campgrounds, comprising 523 campsites, and two horse camps. There are 10 picnic areas with 30 picnic sites. The park can be accessed through any of the 32 available trailheads, 
where visitors can explore the 191 miles of hiking trails offered by the park. The National Park Service warns that cell phone reception in the park is limited and should not be relied upon. Free public Wi-Fi is available at the Black Rock Visitor Center, the Joshua Tree Visitor Center, and the Joshua Tree Cultural Center. Visitors should consider downloading the official National Park Service app before entering the park, which allows access to offline maps for free. Joshua Tree National Park is also an international dark sky park. It's an ideal location for visitors to witness the mesmerizing beauty of the Milky Way, which is often a unique and unforgettable experience. On a clear and moonless night, you should have no difficulty viewing the stars from any part of the park. However, it is important to note that light pollution from surrounding areas affects the night skies of Joshua Tree, causing some areas of the park to be darker than others. Now here are some safety tips for visiting Joshua Tree National Park. It's vital to be mindful of the following tips and safety suggestions from the National Park Service. Cell phone service coverage is extremely limited inside the park. Therefore, relying on your cell phone in an emergency is not advisable. However, if you are in an area with cell phone service, you can dial 911 or call 909-383-5651 for assistance. You can also use emergency phones at the Indian Cove Ranger Station, Intersection Rock Parking Lot, or the Cottonwood Visitor Center. High temperatures, intense sunlight, and low humidity characterize summer in the desert. Drinking at least one gallon of water daily is essential to avoid dehydration. Visitors to the park should bring enough water with them for their visit. However, potable water is available at the Visitor Center in 29 Palms, at Park Headquarters, at Indian Cove Ranger Station, Cottonwood Campground, Black Rock Campground, and the West Entrance Station. Always travel with extra water in your vehicle. Snacking on salty food items on a hot day can help replace electrolytes lost through sweating. Protect yourself from the sun by wearing loose-fitting, light-colored clothing, a wide-brimmed hat, and sunglasses. Remember to apply sunscreen to all exposed skin to prevent sunburn. It's also crucial to remember that any wild animal can be dangerous if approached. Additionally, these animals might carry lethal diseases. Therefore, it's best to view them from a distance or from the safety of your car. Please avoid approaching them to take pictures and educate children not to chase or pick up animals. Feeding wildlife is not recommended as it can harm the animals and cause them to become aggressive toward humans. To prevent animals from consuming your food, store it in hard siding containers or in your vehicle. Catching a glimpse of wildlife in the park is always an exhilarating experience. However, it's essential to remember that the park is their natural habitat and we must ensure they can live without disturbances. The park is home to venomous animals, such as rattlesnakes, scorpions, and black widow spiders. Therefore, when hiking or climbing, look before placing your hands or feet, and avoid stepping or reaching into places you cannot see. Bees can be dangerous if their hives are threatened. They may attack, so staying away and listening for buzzing is best. Bees are attracted to moisture, including human sweat, and are particularly active in the dry summer. Don't swat at them. Keep food and drinks inside your vehicle and roll up your windows. Be cautious when exiting your car. Bees will collect water from any available source to regulate their hive's temperature. If you're allergic to bees, visit when bee activity is low in winter and always carry medication. It's crucial to remain vigilant when driving on park roads as they are narrow, curving, and have soft, sandy shoulders. Make sure to follow the posted speed limits, as many wild animals have been killed by speeding cars. Use pullouts or parking lots instead of stopping in the travel lane when viewing scenery or wildlife. Off-road driving is prohibited. In case you experience car trouble, stay with your vehicle. It is essential to exercise caution and prepare for storms and flash floods. Avoid canyons and washes during rainstorms, and be ready to move to higher ground if necessary to stay safe. Now here's some legends and paranormal activity from Joshua Tree. First up, the Yucca Man. There have been many alleged sightings of mysterious desert creatures in and around the Mojave. These have been given different names, such as the Mojave Bigfoot, the Sierra Highway Devil, and Marvin of the Mojave. The Yucca Man, as he is commonly known, is a desert-adapted Sasquatch 
and is said to inhabit Southern California, Nevada, and Arizona. He has been seen in the Antelope Valley area since the 1970s. Next, the Barker Dam Trail. The Barker Dam Trail is a brief hike that leads to an old water source used by Native Americans in the past. According to local legends, the trail is believed to be haunted by the spirits of the Chimmy Wavy people who were displaced from the area by European settlers. The Chimmy Wavy held the area in high regard, believing it to be sacred and that the spirits of their ancestors are rumored to reside there still. Watch for unusual rock formations as you hike along this trail. Some hikers have reported feeling a sense of peace or reverence as if they're in the presence of something sacred. Others claim to have seen ghostly apparitions or heard chanting in the distance. Next, we have the Wall Street Mill Trail. The Wall Street Mill Trail is an intermediate hike that leads you through a fascinating gold mining area. The mine was used to process gold ore and was abandoned in the 1940s. Some people believe that the spirits of the mill's former workers still haunt the area. Be alert for shadowy figures or unusual lights when exploring the old mill. Several hikers have reported feeling uneasy, as though they were being watched. Some have even heard whispers and footsteps coming from the empty mill. Next, we have the Lost Horse Mine Trail. The Lost Horse Mine Trail takes you to the remains of an old gold mine. It's believed that the mine is haunted by the ghost of a miner who died in a tragic mining accident. Legend says the spirit still roams the area, searching for lost gold. The Lost Horse Mine Trail has a chilling reputation. Many hikers have felt a cold breeze, even amid hot summer temperatures. Others have reported hearing pickaxes striking rocks when no one else is nearby. Lastly, we have Graham Parsons. Country rock musician Graham Parsons passed away just outside Joshua Tree National Park at the Joshua Tree Inn. However, as per his last request, his friend stole his body off the tarmac at LAX and disposed of it by burning it under the overhang at Cap Rock. If you'd like to hear more about the legend of Graham Parsons and his goings-on in Joshua Tree, one of his favorite places, check out my book, National Park Mysteries and Disappearances, Volume 2, California, from our own experiences at the Joshua Tree Inn. Now we have the missing, the found, and tragedies in Joshua Tree National Park. First up, we have Anna Nuno. In January 2023, 58-year-old avid adventurer and hiker Anna Nuno of Lakewood, California, fell and hit her head in Rattlesnake Canyon, an area inside the Indian Cove district of Joshua Tree National Park. Authorities said how Anna fell was unclear, but there was no suspicion of foul play. Park rangers and search and rescue volunteers responded to Anna's aid after receiving notification by cell phone of an injured hiker. However, she sadly succumbed to her head trauma according to the Desert Sun News. According to the Los Angeles Times, Rattlesnake Canyon features a 2.6-mile trail near 29 Palms that takes just over an hour to complete. The Sheriff's Office reported that Rattlesnake Canyon and the Wonderland of Rocks area are challenging to navigate due to their remoteness, difficult terrain, and lack of cell phone service. Kiki Nuno, Anna's daughter, said, Our mother was a kind, caring, and giving person who always put the needs of her family before her own. She was a strong woman who faced every challenge in her life with courage and dignity. Our mother was a source of inspiration to us all and will be deeply missed by everyone whose lives she touched. Next up, Trammell Evans. According to the National Park Service, 25-year-old avid hiker Trammell Evans was last seen on April 30, 2023, when he was dropped off at the Black Rock Campground in the northwest corner of Joshua Tree National Park. Trammell planned to hike from Black Rock to Geology Tour Road, then back to Black Rock via the California Riding and Hiking Trail, National Park Service officials said in a news release. He was supposed to be picked up on May 5 at 11 a.m. by a friend, but he was not there and was reported missing. Park Service officials initiated a search and rescue on May 5, 2023. The search team consisted of highly trained trackers, searchers, and climbers familiar with the area and aerial searches, park officials said. Trammell's mother, Amy Evans, has received unconfirmed tips that he has been spotted alive in Slab City and Wonder Valley. These sightings remain unconfirmed by the family's private investigator. Sadly, Trammell is still missing at the time of this video. He's described as being 6 foot 3 inches tall and weighing 190 pounds. He has reddish-brown hair, 
brown eyes, and facial hair. He was last seen wearing a silver, white, and gray sun hoodie, a black Patagonia puffy vest, blue shorts, blue shoes, a black REI backpack, an egg crate style sleeping pad, a dark green beanie, and a Patagonia fanny pack. Anyone with information regarding Trammell's disappearance or whereabouts is asked to contact the National Park Service at 888-653-0099 or you can call 909-383-5652. Next up, we have Michael Spitz. On January 16, 2022, 35-year-old teacher Michael Spitz of San Diego, California, was free solo climbing the 100-foot Illusion Dweller in Joshua Tree National Park. The following day, around 9.50 a.m., two hikers found him deceased at the base of the Sentinel Wall near the Hidden Valley Nature Trail, according to the Desert Sun. And, according to the Times of San Diego, a Facebook post from Santa Fe Christian Schools in Solana Beach, where Michael worked as a Spanish teacher, described him as a multi-sport adventure athlete, lifelong surfer, avid rock climber, licensed skydiver, backpacker, and lover of books and coffee. The medical examiner's office stated that he sustained an unspecified injury around 5.30 p.m. on Sunday, according to the Times of San Diego. Officials estimate that Michael fell at least 80 feet. According to Owen Clark of Climbing.com, Brian Gillette, Michael's friend of eight years, said, Illusion Dweller was one of Michael's favorite climbs in Joshua Tree. He loved the route. He was working on a climb nearby, leave it to Beaver, and would warm up on Illusion Dweller. He was very comfortable with it. Next, Tina Lynn Fiore. On March 26, 2022, 51-year-old Tina Lynn Fiore, a climber from Riverside County, California, went climbing with two others in an area known as Turkey Terror in Joshua Tree National Park after celebrating a friend's birthday, according to the Desert Sun. Matt Himmelstein who was part of Tina's three-person climbing team, told the Desert Sun that the trio was top roping, a climbing method involving stringing a rope through a permanent anchor system at the top of the climb. The rope acts as a safety mechanism that supports a climber's weight if they fall. A second person assists in gathering slack at the bottom of the climb and serving as a counterweight. Matt explained to the Desert Sun that climbing equipment, such as a type of nylon rope known as webbing, is often left attached to the permanent anchors at the top of a climb. Tina just ended up being the last person in the day to climb up there, he said. She got to the top and told us that she had secured herself, so the person down at the bottom was no longer doing that safety work. Matt told the Desert Sun that Tina ran her safety rope through nylon webbing left by someone who had previously climbed the route. The desert is not kind to nylon, so I can't tell you how old it was, he said, but it doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a whole lot of time sitting in the sun baking and also getting rained on being frozen, and all that stuff. When Tina leaned back to rappel down the rocks, the weathered webbing gave way, and she fell to her death. Tina had fallen at least 80 feet near the Sheep Pass campground. In a press release, Joshua Tree Superintendent David Smith said, Our hearts go out to Ms. Fiore's family and friends during this extremely painful time. Next up, Paul Hanks. 54-year-old avid hiker and attorney Paul Hanks set out to celebrate his birthday with a hike in Joshua Tree National Park on March 11, 2018. According to CBS News Los Angeles, he wore shorts and a t-shirt and took just a few energy packs and a few hours worth of water. Paul had been to Joshua Tree several times, but this time would be different. While bouldering or rock hopping, he fell approximately 20 feet, shattered his left heel, and broke his pelvis. It happened. I slipped, and it was just, having not slipped in 45 years, it was instant and total shock, he told CBS News. Paul called out for help, but the vast desert echoed his cries back to him. As the sun set and the temperature plummeted, he found refuge beneath a Joshua tree, hoping the dry soil around it would provide him some cushioning and that he could use the loose dirt to warm himself up. By this point, he was out of water, according to CBS. By the very first night, I was drinking my own urine, he said. I drank all the water in my bottle and was refilling my bottle with my own urine. Paul fell a second time, about 15 feet, and hit his head. He ate cactus for food. He was in and out of consciousness, but refused to give up. 
To quit out there is basically a death sentence, he told CBS. On day five, he thought he was dreaming when he heard voices. They belonged to the search and rescue crew that found him. These three angels appeared out of nowhere, and I was shocked. I just couldn't believe it, he said. I don't want to say I'd given up, but multiple times I'd written myself off that I was never going to see another human being again. Paul was taken to a Palm Springs hospital and was reunited with his family. Despite facing multiple surgeries, he was expected to make a full recovery. You're out there, and you're on your last breath of life. I would think you would be fantasizing about much greater things, but for some reason, I was just fantasizing about chugging down a Gatorade, Paul said. Next up, David Sewell. On Saturday, April 21, 2018, 76-year-old legally blind hiker David Sewell left the Quail Spring parking lot for an unspecified location in Johnny Lane Canyon, according to National Park officials. David's vehicle was found on Saturday at around 8 p.m. in the Quail Springs parking lot per a news release from the National Park Service. A note was found inside his Honda Odyssey, which stated that he had begun his hike around 8.45 a.m. on Saturday and would require assistance if he did not return by Sunday. The National Park Service said search and rescue personnel started operations on Monday at 6.45 a.m. with approximately 50 searchers, two K-9 team, and fixed and rotary wing air support from the California Highway Patrol. On Tuesday morning, David was miraculously found alive not far from where his car was parked, in collapse of exhaustion on a secluded hillside. It's a miracle. He was awake, conscious, and talking to rescuers when they found him, park spokesman George Land told the Los Angeles Times. He had been up there for about three days without water. Due to the remote terrain, David had to be airlifted out of the area. He was taken to Desert Regional Medical Center and was treated for dehydration. Next, Claire Nelson. On Tuesday, May 22, 2018, Claire Nelson, a 35-year-old hiker from New Zealand, set out on the Lost Palms Oasis Trail in Joshua Tree National Park around 9.15 a.m., according to the Desert Sun. She told her friend she would be back the following day. Claire was reported missing when she failed to return as scheduled. Search efforts were initiated on Friday, May 25. On the same day, around 3 p.m., she was found alive by a search helicopter and was airlifted to Desert Regional Medical Center, according to the Desert Sun. Claire had fallen around 11 a.m. on Tuesday after she lost her footing and fell about 26 feet into a small clearing. According to an Instagram post, she was scrambling over a high boulder and shattered her pelvis and dislocated her left ankle. Claire said, I didn't realize it at the time, but I'd gone a mile off the trail. I am very, very grateful to be alive. Claire said that she had to drink her own urine because she ran out of water and fashioned a curtain from a stick and a plastic bag to minimize sun exposure, according to the Desert Sun. I felt more vulnerable than I could ever have imagined in my life, Claire said. According to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Claire said she thinks it was her hiking experience, not inexperience, that very nearly got her killed. She didn't worry about sharing her itinerary with anyone and didn't leave any notes telling people where they might find her if she didn't come home. Next up, Paul Miller. 51-year-old Paul Miller, an experienced hiker and outdoorsman from Guelph, Ontario, Canada, went missing on July 13, 2018, while vacationing with his wife, Stephanie. Paul told Stephanie he was going for one more hike in Joshua Tree National Park on the 49 Palms Oasis Trail before they began their journey home. He left without his cell phone, which Stephanie said was typical. According to the Desert Sun, Paul was supposed to come back to the hotel where he and Stephanie were staying to check out at 11 a.m. When he did not return as expected, she decided to wait an extra hour before taking action. However, when Paul had not returned by noon, Stephanie reported missing to park officials, prompting a search at 12.30 p.m. According to the Desert Sun, Paul's rental car was located in a nearby parking lot a short time later. More than 600 volunteers put in 6,000 hours looking for Paul to no avail. Also, 20 canine units were sent out to help locate him. Efforts to find Paul came up short, however, until photographs of the area were taken with a drone in November 2019. After looking through the pictures, 
investigators saw what looked to be human remains. Park rangers recovered them on December 20, 2019, and the medical examiner's office confirmed they belonged to Paul. It's been a tough journey, waiting, waiting, waiting. Then, when you hear he's been found, it doesn't make it any easier. Paul's wife, Stephanie, told the Desert Sun in a phone interview. While we will likely never fully know the circumstances of Paul's demise, Stephanie told the Desert Sun that they believe he could have experienced a heart attack or heat stroke. Officials said there was no initial signs of foul play. I hated to think that he was suffering and we couldn't find him, Stephanie said. Next, we have Bill Owasco. In June 2010, 66-year-old Bill Owasco, an avid hiker, jogger, and Vietnam veteran, planned a solo hiking trip to Joshua Tree National Park, which he had visited several times before. Bill intended to spend a week in the area and catch a return flight home by July 1. Before he left his home in Georgia, he provided his girlfriend, Mary Winston, with an itinerary of his planned destinations, according to Jeff Manaw of the New York Times. On Thursday, June 24, Bill packed lunch, water, and snacks for his excursion. He first hiked to Carrie's Castle, Madoff said. The hike was meant to be a loop, starting and ending at the remote historic site. Mary tried to persuade him to go hiking somewhere else due to the remoteness of the area. However, Bill kept his plans the same, but promised Mary he would leave the park by 5 p.m. When she did not hear from Bill as expected, Mary tried calling his cell phone multiple times, but it went straight to voicemail. Mary attempted to reach the Park Service officials that night, but was unsuccessful. The following day, around 8 a.m., Mary contacted Park Service officials again and reported Bill missing, according to Manaw. The day went missing. Temperatures in the park had reached nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. After receiving the news that Bill was missing, park rangers quickly set out for the trailhead. However, they could not locate Bill's white 2007 Chrysler Sebring rental car. It seemed that no one had visited the trail in at least a week, according to Manaw. Dave Pillman, a former executive director of Friends of Joshua Tree and a 19-year Joshua Tree search and rescue veteran, told Jeff Manaw, it looks benign to a person who drives through it, but there are so many areas where you can get lost and not even realize it until you're lost. You look back and figure out, where did I come from? Pillman also told Manaw, the park contains areas of unknown difficulty where large rocks lean together, forming dangerous pits and caves. According to Manaw, Carrie's Castle was just one of the many locations on Bill's itinerary. The list included places as far away as the Salton Sea and Mount San Jacinto, over an hour's drive from the park. Rangers discovered that Bill's National Park Pass had never been scanned at either park entrance, so there was no record of his visit. Manaw writes that on June 26, a California Highway Patrol helicopter located Bill's rental car at the Juniper Flats trailhead, approximately a 90-minute drive from the Carey's Castle trailhead. Bill would have been exposed to mid-90s temperatures in late June with limited access to food and water. Therefore, the search efforts were promptly shifted toward Juniper Flats. Under Dave Pillman's guidance, says Manaw, search teams were sent from the location of Bill's car up to the top of Quail Mountain, south to Keys View, deep into Juniper Flats, and out through several less likely but possible areas. According to Manaw, volunteers across Southern California arrived on Saturday afternoon, June 26, and set up an incident command post near Cap Rock. They created a 6 by 9 foot map of the area and marked each team's daily GPS tracks and the routes of helicopter flights. One team found a red bandana at the foot of Quail Mountain, while another claimed to have seen lights on a ridge. Bill was still not found despite using a bloodhound and additional helicopter flights. Manaw writes that on July 5, 2010, 11 days after being reported missing, the official search for Bill was called off as regional resources had been exhausted. It was assumed that he could not have survived that long without food and water in the extreme temperatures. Pete Carlson of the Riverside Mountain Rescue Unit said to Manaw, After a while, where else do you look? In February 2022, Hikers Mary Nagy and her son, Zach, found human remains in the northwestern corner of the park adjacent to the Panorama Loop Trail. High Desert Radio Station K101.7 KCDZ reported that a wallet was found with the remains with the name of Bill Owasco. Tom Mahood, who previously volunteered with the Riverside Mountain Rescue Unit, told the Desert Sun 
It's a really odd area for him to have been in, and I can't fathom what he was thinking. Always said, he'll eventually be found in some place no one ever thought he would be. While we now know the conclusion, we may very likely never know any details unless Bill left behind any surviving notes as to his predicament. And finally, Ed Rosenthal. On Friday, September 24, 2010, 64-year-old real estate broker Edward Rosenthal got lost when he took a wrong turn on a loop trail near Joshua Tree National Park's Black Rock Campground while trying to get back to his car. After spending six days without food or water, he was spotted by a helicopter crew around 10.30 a.m. on September 30, according to National Park's Traveler. Amazingly, Edward was alive but very dehydrated. Edward said he became so weak that he could not sit up when the helicopter rescue crew finally found him. He just made a wrong turn somewhere. He was hiking on a loop trail. Somehow, he got off, said Chief Joe Zarki. Unfortunately, the area he got off on was a very steep, gorge-like area. He couldn't get out. He just kept going downhill. He realized he was lost and could not go any further, so he lied low and wrote on his hat. Edward's wife, Nicole Kaplan, told the Associated Press. Edward wrote about what kind of funeral he wanted. While the spot where Edward was found was probably seven to eight miles in a straight line in terms of canyon miles from the loop trail, he probably walked twice that distance, said Chief Zarki. According to the Associated Press, Edward's wife told park officials that Edward had some food and water with him. That lasted a day and a half, so maybe since Sunday, he's been out there without food and water, said Chief Zarki. He got a break because we had some cloudy weather that kept the temperatures down. Edward was transported to High Desert Medical Center in stable condition. He's been reunited with his family. He's talking. He's doing reasonably well, Chief Zarki said. This is the outcome you hope for. In conclusion, Joshua Tree National Park is fascinating, with natural allure and an intriguing history. The stories surrounding the park add a mesmerizing layer that's already captivating landscape. This park harbors natural wonders and a sense of enigma that captures the human imagination. Whether it's the eerie beauty of the Joshua Trees or the vast expanses of the desert, people have attributed spiritual significance to the area. As visitors, we should approach Joshua Tree National Park with the utmost respect for its wilderness and a keen awareness of our surroundings. The safety of those who explore its trails and vistas should always be paramount. Well, friends, there you have it. What are your thoughts on Joshua Tree National Park? I look forward to your comments, but please keep it friendly and respectful. Until we meet again, be good to yourselves and each other. Stay safe out there. As for me, I'll see you a little further on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time. And please, tell your animals I said hi.